Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. What you can see here behind me is the PX277 OLED Max, an OLED monitor with a maximum resolution of 1440p, HDR support and the maximum refresh rate on this monitor is 240 hertz. This monitor was provided by Pixio. Thank you very much for that. And I have to say the overall or general picture quality is really good, especially in the HDR mode. I really like it and as you may or may not know, I'm surrounded by OLED TVs. I have the LG G2, the LG CX and I have also the Samsung S95C. So I do like OLED and I was actually, I was, I had a very high expectation actually when Pixie reached out to me and asked me if I would like to test the brand new OLED monitor what they have to offer. And yeah, I, I said of course yes, because expectations very high, OLED is the technology in my opinion which is superior over LCD but I have to say there are also disadvantages with this monitor and we should talk about this. So let's talk about the specs first. We have a native 1440p resolution on a 27 inch screen. We have a maximum refresh rate of 240 hertz when you use display port and we have HDR support. So we're talking about HDR a little bit later about all the measurements what I have done and we have HDMI on board. Two HDMI connections and here we start to having the issue because the HDMI ports are just supporting HDMI 2.0. Not having HDMI 2.1 support on this monitor is a very big disappointment because if you like to use your PlayStation 5 or Xbox series on this monitor, you will run into problems because of the HDMI 2.0 limitations on this monitor. So let's make this very, very quick. If you like to use your PlayStation 5 on this monitor and if you like to use VRR, Forget about this, it will not work, never ever, because the PlayStation 5 does not support VRR FreeSync. And of course this monitor does not support HDMI 2.1, which would be required by the PlayStation 5 to actually use VRR. So that means, again, VRR will never work on the PlayStation 5. If Sony ever decides to update their PlayStation 5 with FreeSync VRR, then yes, but then I think we run into the same issues what we have with the Xbox. So on the PlayStation 5, we can use HDR and 120 Hertz refresh rate and 4K with this monitor. Again, forget about VRR. On the Xbox series, on the other hand, it looks a little bit better, but still not perfect because you can either have HDR or VRR. And despite the fact that Pixio is actually claiming on the web page that you can use the Xbox series with HDR and VRR at the same time, at least that's how I'm reading it, it is not possible. I can't enable HDR and VRR at the same time. You can have either HDR, 120Hz, 4K resolution, the same as on the PlayStation 5, or you forget about HDR and you use this monitor with VRR enabled. It is not possible, at least not on my monitor and in combination with my Xbox to use HDR and VRR at the same time on the Xbox. And to quickly summarize the issue with the HDMI 2.0 support here on this monitor, if you like to use this screen in combination with an Xbox or a PlayStation 5, I can't recommend to get this monitor actually because you will just have issues and I have to say I don't understand why we have just HDMI 2.0 on a brand new monitor in 2024. This is something I don't understand. Luckily when we're now talking about DisplayPort there is no issue at all in combination with my PC. But to be very honest I would be very surprised if there would be any issue with the DisplayPort connections because there shouldn't be okay. So I tested this monitor with two graphic cards, my 4080 and my 3070, which you can see here in combination right now. And there was no issue at all. We're talking about 1440p resolution, HDR enabled and G-Sync or VRR enabled as well. So no issues at all. And this with a maximum refresh rate of 240 hertz. 
And last but not least, we have a type C USB connection as well. And I wasn't able to test actually the 240 refresh rate with type C connected, but I connected my laptop and everything is just working. It's just plug and play. And it also charges my laptop at the same time. So this is absolutely fantastic because I'm working from home very often and I'm using a feature like this actually yeah, since I'm working from home. And this is very handy because the newer um, laptops, they don't have any HDMI ports anymore. And again, we talked about the issue with HDMI 2.0 here. So the type C support here or the connection here is just working flawless. You just plug it in and you start working. Okay, so let's talk about HDR. Let's talk about the maximum peak brightness in HDR. And by the way, if you are looking for great HDR material on YouTube, I can just recommend this channel here. So what I found is, and I tested, of course, the monitor with test pattern and in real life scenarios, um, the maximum peak brightness is actually not bad. When we're just talking about um, test pattern right now, okay, 9% test pattern, 9% window test pattern, the maximum peak brightness was around 800 candela, 800 nits, which is actually not bad. And the impression what I have right now with real HDR material, it's, it's really not bad. Okay, I, I really do like the picture because we have, thanks to OLED technology, a perfect black if necessary. Okay, so this is a very big advantage. That, that means the contrast here right now is just fantastic. The colors are popping. It's it's really, really nice. Okay, so when we're now talking about um, maximum peak brightness on a full white screen, then we have the limitations from an OLED screen because now we're talking about a maximum peak brightness of around 200 to 230 nits or candela, which is probably for most of the people okay, even you play or work in a very bright condition. But there we would have um, an advantage from an LCD screen because LCD screens can get much brighter. If you need this, that's a different story actually, or a different question, but that's the fact. 230 nits maximum peak brightness on a full wide screen in HDR. So let's just quickly talk about SDR. Even I'm recommending to using this monitor with HDR enabled. But what I found is that the maximum peak brightness on a full wide screen is very similar in SDR to HDR, around 215 nits or candela. On a 10 person window, on the other hand, we have 460 nits, which should be more than enough or bright enough for SDR content. But again, I would recommend to use this monitor with HDR enabled. So let's talk about the out of the box measurements, what I have taken from this monitor and I'm actually not very impressed. So the first time when you start this monitor, HDR was disabled on the monitor, which is fine. But the problem is the SDR color space was actually set to DCI-P3 by standard or factory settings, at least on my monitor. And so far as I can tell, I received a brand new monitor and it looks like it's the normal retail version. So I think no one actually touched this monitor before me. So this is a very big disappointment because when you start this monitor the very first time, you have, uh, thanks to the DCI-P3 color space in SDR, a way too oversaturated picture. Thanks God, it is of course easily to change. But if you don't know what to do, then you're stuck with a way too oversaturated picture. The out of the box experience with HDI enabled was also not very impressive because the whole picture is actually too bluish. So it has always a little bit of a bluish tone. So the problem now is that compared to SDR, we can't change anything on the picture in HDR, nothing. Because all the options what we have in SDR, like saturation, hue and stuff like that, is grayed out as soon you use HDR on this monitor. So that's, in my opinion, a big disadvantage because I would like to at least somehow calibrate the HDR picture mode as well. When I tested the HDR capabilities from the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, I found something very interesting because I mentioned already that the yeah, maximum peak brightness on this monitor is actually not too bad. One percent window, roughly around 900 nits, a nine percent window, roughly around 800 nits, which is not too bad. But when I'm using the HDR calibration on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox series, I 
come to a complete different result actually because on the Xbox it's actually quite simple to understand or to see what the, yeah, the result is when you do the calibration. So all what you have to do is you press the four shoulder buttons and you get this little menu here or this little um, info screen. And when you now follow the instruction actually and I do this right now and I can't see any field anymore now, then the maximum nits actually or TML is around 550 on this screen. The next one, it's actually the same. So now all the fields are almost disappeared, maybe one more, but now I would talk about, or we would talk about a maximum nit or maximum peak brightness of 600 nits. So this is of course not even close to what I was able to measure with test patterns. And when we're now using HDR in games like Dead Island 2 on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series in this case, and we're going to the display menu and we just calibrating actually HDR, then I found that yeah, a value between 450 and 500 is exactly what this monitor can do. Because as soon as I'm actually increasing this to, let's say to the measurements what I had on 1% or 9%, test pattern, I would actually clip a lot of yeah, details in specular highlights. So that means the real peak brightness on this monitor in HDR is actually way lower than my maximum peak brightness measurements yeah, were giving to me because um, it looks like that maybe with just test pattern, the monitor is performing really well, but in real life content, it looks a little bit different. So let's talk about something which is very, very hard to show on YouTube or to record, dirty screen effect. So I'm very sensitive to this. So I had the QN90B, I think was the LCD, the top LCD TV from Samsung back then. And at some point I sold it because the dirty screen effect was just way too much for me. So even the LG G2, what I have here is not perfect. My S95C is very close. This one, is without any issues. I haven't seen any issues. Of course, if we, if we now would look at crazy test pattern, yes, every single monitor, doesn't matter which one has issues at some point, but the question is, can you see this with real life content? Like when you play a game, when you watch soccer, when you watch um, hockey, not on this screen, okay, not on this monitor. It is just perfect, at least my sample here. So this is, the outstanding thing on this monitor. And this is what or why I like OLED because OLED has the advantage over LCD to have less, way less dirty screen effects. So what is now a summary? Can I recommend the PX277 OLED Max? And no, to be very honest, no, I can't even Probably I would never receive any test monitor from Pixio again. That's how it is, I like to be honest. This monitor is lacking HDMI 2.1. That's the only reason why I can't recommend this monitor. The general picture quality is, is decent. It's, it's not outstanding, don't get me wrong. We have the issues with HDR maximum peak brightness, but we have those issues with any, with a lot of other monitors as well, okay? You need to spend way more money to get a decent HDR monitor. TVs as well, they're very expensive, okay? So we're talking about here, I think, 600, 700 US dollars, okay? So that's a lot of money for a 27 inch screen. And then we don't have HDMI 2.1 on board. That's, that's not acceptable in my opinion. The rest is average, okay? We have OLED technology, which is outstanding or better than LCD technology, in my opinion. We have nice picture quality. We have the downside with that we can't change any HDR picture settings, which I have seen in many on many other screens as well. I don't understand why. So the, you, again, you need to spend a way more or way more money to have full control over your monitor. Way more money, okay? So that's the facts. So again. Unfortunately, I can't recommend this monitor because you are going to buy a monitor for several years and maybe even you don't want to yeah, connect a console, a, a gaming console right now and you say, hey, I don't care about HDMI 2.0. I just want, would like to uh, uh, connect my PC, which is fine. Everything works perfectly with PC. But maybe, maybe at some point you like to connect something or this monitor is for your little ones and they have an Xbox or PlayStation. 
You will just have limited functionality with this monitor, unfortunately. That's why I can't recommend it. Sorry, that's how it is. Thank you very much for watching me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.